Nerdies, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and as promised, I am back to talk about the Johnny Depp vs. the Sun case to end out week two, day nine, and as always, I want to get a, give a huge thank you to Nick Wallace, who does a fantastic, non-biased, amazing job at live tweeting it. He does such such good work, and he does have a tip jar, so make sure to check him out on Twitter. But anyways, I wanted to say before I get started, make sure you are subbed um, to the channel. I have had people saying they were getting unsubbed for some reason, and I am working on a big video that does more of a timeline explaining in depth each of the 14 alleged incidents in more of a laid out kind of linear fashion so I don't have to keep saying you know the poop incident if it was poop gate or if it was you know something like the phone incident so yeah I wanted to make sure I reminded you guys of that so anyways let's get to business today all the witnesses came via a video link and it was an extremely concerning day in a couple different ways right so I had mentioned that the metadata on one of the audios were wrong before it said 1990 or 2019 I apologize instead of 2015 I had mentioned this in a previous video now that metadata has come into question and its legitimacy not only the metadata but the fact that some of these pictures we are seeing and I will show you throughout the video um, could be you know some kind of digital filter some kind of Photoshop so all of that is getting you know some attention right now and we will talk about that a little bit more but also um, the legitimacy of the actions of Adam Waldman, another, you know, from Johnny's team. So we will talk about that too. Uh, but today we saw Isaac Brock, uh, Alejandro Romero, Travis McGivern, uh, Laura DiVernay, and Catherine Kendall. Now I apologize if I said any of those names incorrectly. I am not the best at it. So let's jump right into Isaac Brock. He lived in the same penthouse as Johnny and Amber, along with Whitney, Rocky Pennington, and her fiancé, Joshua Drew. Now, um, this penthouse was paid for and always has been paid for by Johnny, so he was supporting literally everyone. So, let's go to May 22nd. It is the day after the phone-throwing incident, right? Uh, Isaac reported he saw Amber a private security officer, two locksmiths, Raquel Pennington, and her fiancé, Josh, um, in the hall, right? He was leaving. He saw them in the hallway. Well, that's when Amber told Isaac um, that Jenny had gotten violent the night before, and she was going to be changing the locks, and that's kind of when uh, Joshua Drew pulled him off to the side and told Isaac that Johnny wanted them out. He wanted them gone. It was his house. Uh, but they refused to move out because they didn't want to leave Amber there with him being violent previously. Even though, you know, she had just hired this security guard. So Amber, you know, show, then showed Isaac where she was hit by the phone, where she was hit by Johnny. And um, there was nothing. There was literally nothing. No redness, no swelling. No bruises, no cuts. He confirmed there was absolutely nothing. Um, to the to the fact that he even said to her, I don't see anything, but maybe that's all the beauty from the other side of your face, kind of trying to cheer her up and make her feel better, right? But he did say straight to her face, I don't see anything. Amber, there is nothing there. This is a reoccurring theme that we have seen time and time again. And they even went, you know, to show photos from that day. And he says that is not what she looked like at all. So let's fast forward a few weeks uh, to June. And um, this is recently after the restraining order. Amber saw him in the hallway, invited him over for lunch, and he refused. He was angry with her. He was confused. Because everything he was seeing in the media about Johnny and witnessing in real life 
Was it true? He was seeing these things in the media. You know, Johnny did this. She looked like this. And then he would see her every day in the hall looking perfectly fine. So he didn't understand where all this came from. And he did also go on to mention, you know, that he did see Elon Musk there on more than one occasion. But we'll get to that with Alejandro Romero. Now, Alejandro told the court that Elon Musk was, you know, regularly visiting. And um, so much so that he had his own parking spot. He had his own key fob. And uh, to top it off, you know, Elon was only there when Johnny wasn't around. And late at night, huh? imagine that. So the next witness we are having is Travin, Travis McGivern. Now, they are going to speak of the incident March 23rd, 2015. And this is the incident where um, Amber accused Johnny of hitting her sister and her. So Amber, you know, accused Johnny of having an affair with someone named Rochelle at that point. Nah, and never saw, but he never saw, you know, Johnny ever, Travis, never saw Johnny get violent, um, but did during this altercation, because he was present, see Amber get physically aggressive, push and pull Johnny, and even punch him in the eye with a closed fist. Now, Here's where I kind of want to talk about the metadata. This took me a little bit. I wanted to make sure I had this right. Now, Johnny's lawyers um, have now started to question which of the photos were taken and when they were taken, if they were digitally enhanced or if they were Photoshopped, um, and have submitted an application to have them looked at by their own expert, not by, you know, an expert on the side of the sun. And they want them to look at them. Um, But that won't be decided until Monday at 9.30. Amber is going to be on the stand Monday at 10. So they have to decide before. And, I, you know, the audio was really, it was dated 2019. And it doesn't make any sense. So the spreadsheet that was submitted by Amber for these dates, for these times, were wrong. And if you look at the spreadsheet, they all the time say, Zero, 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 zero. Even the judge himself literally said, it doesn't take a genius to see there's something funny going on. Um, Not to mention 20 images that were from May 21st. All of these images have the same exact time. They all say 8.23 p.m. So there is definitely something going on. Now, they're, they're also saying that there is an issue with the image being images being saturated or otherwise photoshopped. So, hopefully we will know more about that on Monday. I do think this is very important to the case, obviously. Because if these are wrong, wrong time, wrong date, you know, if they were messed with digitally, this is going to absolutely, you know, ruin Amber's case. Which, if it, you know, it's kind of ruined already. So, anyways, let's get to Laura uh, Divernay. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I apologize. So, she claims... Now, now, stay with me. She claims she was pressured into signing a declaration in favor of Johnny Depp because she was scared of what Johnny's lawyer, specifically Adam Waldman, would do to her and went then to Amber asking for an attorney so she could file a declaration in favor of Amber. So, there was also some email showed, you know, specifically from Adam to Laura, uh, where she said she felt threatened. Now, I did read the emails. I don't find them particularly threatening at all. That's just me, you know, personally. Somebody probably could, you know, people can get mad at anything nowadays, right? So, there was also between her, so audio, between her and Amber, where she was unknowingly recorded. knew that it was difficult relationship at best I go but I was peripheral and so anyway he was just like and I said and I was I I know that I know that summer was the summer that I had I was planning this big trip to go to Africa so I go I wasn't even there that summer and in my mind I wasn't it's been four years so I didn't know anything and then I got a text from him at like three o'clock in the morning basically calling me a liar and literally saying, well, then you are just part of Amber's conspiratorial group. I mean, this guy is the biggest 
under the sun. She said that Adam Waldman wrote her declaration for her and she just signed it. Yeah, she just said, okay, and I'm done. So after having this big scuffle in the courtroom, there was a lot of like waiting around and trying to figure out what was going on. Um, the son somehow got emails between Laura and Laura and her lawyer. Now, it actually backfires, but um, I'm not sure how they actually got these emails, which is really weird because they did the same thing to Johnny with his 70,000 text messages. But so it backfires, right? Um, she found that the son lawyer were very threatening is what they say. And it says um, the declaration is 100 percent true. And I found <laughs> the son's lawyers very threatening. I uh, this lady is like bipolar so also that she um drafted a press release on top of everything else to the hollywood reporter now it wasn't submitted of course but um it was on how the son was pressuring her she never did send it but it was drafted but as of right now that information during the scuffle is on hold because of the attorney client um, privilege between Laura and her lawyer and um, the if it is able to be seen in court and no one quite knows how it was obtained. Um, I'm sure they do. They're just not saying how, but nobody knows if this is going to be admissible or not. So the next witness is Catherine Kendall who is an actress and a Me Too advocate and a sexual abuse survivor, right? There was absolutely no reason for this woman to have to go through this and be there. No one asked her anything besides who she was, how she got involved with Me Too and other stuff. So I had to actually find out what the issue was with this lady, right? Because there was no reason for her to be there. Um, they, You know, Johnny's team did get a little upset because she was there. Um, she was called on by Sasha Wash. She was supposed to um, actually be questioned by her, and she completely ignored it. Completely ignored it. So I went to find out why. Uh, I did a little bit of digging, and I was able to get into her witness statement. And um, what it said is she was misquoted and her words were taken out of context during the actual son's wife beating article that this is all over, right? So she said she never accused Johnny. And her text actually said, word for word verbatim, Amber had hit him, which is why, as you know, I don't condone any violence. That's what her text said. Now, they snipped it out, and it just said, I don't condone any violence, making it seem like Johnny was the one perpetrating that violence. And she was there to clear her name, clear the record and everything else. But Sasha was never said anything about it. She didn't want to make herself look worse. I'm I'm sure of it. But the judge does have the witness statement so they can actually see what was going on. There is so much tomfoolery going on with the sun side like they've hacked johnny's phone (laughs) they've basically hacked uh, laura's emails and now they've called upon witnesses and don't ask them anything we've got questionable metadata and questionable photoshop pictures like how much worse can this get haven't i said that every day this week i have never heard of a person that is this low Uh, to the ground that Amber is. It is absolutely disgusting the thing she does. So let me know, of course, what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I want to give a huge shout-out to my Patreon and subscribe stars. You guys literally make this channel possible. Huge thank you to Cage the Mick, Robert Mick, Twiz, Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Chris Z, David L, David Rafford, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Mighty Balls, Mike Buckner, Mizen Barbosa, Ruscar, Ryan Decker, Robert Hoffman, and Doc Holiday. You guys are absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget on the way out to like as always if you enjoy the content and hit subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.